and welcome back to Opera Off Stage. I'm Jesse, And I'm Michelle. And today we're going to talk a little bit about coronavirus. I wasn't sure originally if I wanted to do an episode about coronavirus, if only because I feel like obviously you can't really escape that kind of news every time you open up your phone. But I think that it's incredibly important that we address this since it especially heavily affects our community. It affects our work. And we just wanted to take a moment to say that we feel for everyone in our community right now. We know a lot of you are worried for family members. Some of you may be sick and that a lot of us are mourning. Some of you were looking forward to graduating. Some of you had recitals or shows or contracts that you were excited to perform and those things are gone. And so it's okay for us to go through a mourning period for this time. So what we're really going to focus on in this episode is we're going to go through a couple questions that we asked of some people who were in school uh, when things started to shut down, as well as give a absolutely exhaustive list of resources that Michelle has painstakingly put together that should help you get through this time as well as we can. But we wanted you as a community to know that we are here for you and we are going to do everything during this time that we can to offer as many resources as possible for you. We're here for you guys. So we're going to jump into those interview questions. We asked two different students about their experiences, the first of which is Nathaniel Thompson, who is a senior music performance major at Pepperdine University. The second is Lauren Falk, who is a second year master's student at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and the graduate assistant for Lyric Theater Illinois. So the first question we asked of them was, how has COVID-19 affected your experience as a graduating senior? How are things different now that classes and performances are canceled? Nathaniel said, the outbreak has thrown me for a loop. I had about five or six concerts within just a month and a half that are now canceled, most likely including my senior recital. I was also kicked out of my on-campus housing. Luckily, my mother was able to help me move, but it was still a lot of trouble to pack up my life and drive all the way to Houston from the West Coast on such short notice. I had to say goodbye to a lot of people very quickly, including my cat, Agnes. I knew I'd be leaving this year, but I was expecting to have more time to prepare. And on top of that, now I have to go straight into the professional world about four months early, definitely feeling overwhelmed and underprepared. And this is kind of a thing we've heard from a lot of people recently, which is just, you know, when you're heading into the end of your senior year or the end of your master's or the end of whatever it was, you expect to have the time to prepare mentally to say goodbye to people and a place and I know for a lot of people right now, that opportunity to to deal with it has kind of been stripped away with the rush to get everyone far enough away from each other. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, in a normal circumstance, even when you graduate and are prepared for that, it's not like your whole school and whole like friend group suddenly disappear. You know, you graduate in the summer and usually people are still hanging out or still living in the city that they went to college or did their graduate program in. So it's definitely weird to really see everybody just completely kind of vanish, you know? Yeah. And on the note of like just the unpredictability, the next question we asked of both Lauren and Nathaniel, what are some of the future obstacles you foresee and what is your advice on overcoming them? Nathaniel said, as a now early college grad, I'm looking to make my entrance to the professional world, but everything is shut down. Performance venues are closed. People are scared to come to studios or even to my house to have lessons. I feel like I can't expect to do any professional work before this blows over. I suppose my best advice on overcoming this would just to be to put yourself out there and find what you can. Everybody is struggling with work. Lean on friends and family. Talk to your landlords to work out delayed or reduced rent payments. Take advantage of the help others are giving. Just keep on that grind and treat others the way you want to be treated. Kindness is infectious right now. Keep an eye out for it. And Lauren's response was, The first major obstacle is not having a face-to-face coachings or lessons. My university will be using Zoom, which allows us to have virtual time with our professors. Fortunately, we have some extra audio equipment lying around at my house so that I can have high-quality audio for these sessions. I think having decent speakers and microphones, if possible, are important to get the most out of virtual lessons and coachings. I'll also be unable to have a live recital and will instead be submitting a video recording. It'll be sad not to have any audience, but I'm glad that I'll still be able to perform the program I've worked so hard on this year. 
I also have an on-campus job as the graduate assistant and social media manager for my program. I am able to do a lot of my work virtually, but most of the projects I was working on and promoting have been cancelled. Still, I'm able to keep in touch with faculty and students via social media and email. I will get creative in my content creation and projects in order to fulfill my hours, but at least I'm still... And I think I think both of those answers kind of highlight some of the major things. Obviously, a lot of people were looking forward to doing their recitals. That's such a big capstone moment for you in your undergrad and grad school. And it's very awkward to suddenly know that you may perform it, but you won't really have an audience. Yeah, it definitely is interesting to see how all these different universities and conservatories and music programs are kind of handling this. It's just kind of interesting. Some people are just kind of having their recitals stripped away and it's just canceled. Some are still, you know, doing it in either like a very limited audience setting or just recording. So it's kind of interesting to see how everybody's handling this so differently because we are in such an unprecedented situation. Well, and when you think about it, two things about studying music. Um, Number one, music is one of the hardest mediums to transition to fully online. You know, it's just not the same experience as being in a room with another person, especially when you're trying to see what they're doing physically, as well as getting, you know, we, we get our feedback via what people can hear. So it's very tricky if you don't necessarily have the best equipment on hand, which a lot of people don't. This is kind of across college majors, but there are a lot of teachers who aren't super familiar with technology. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tons of students too. You know, we know how to use technology and it's easy enough for us to learn, but not a lot of us are actively using technology in this way on a daily basis, especially before all of this happened. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing that we were looking at was... How have you been adapting your practice routine for home? And Lauren gave us a great answer about this. She said, this year I started a practice journal where I write down what I work on each day, how long I practice for, and what issues I ran into during my practice sessions. I've had a goal of practicing for an hour a day unless I'm sick or have had a vocally taxing day. Since I don't have ensembles or rehearsals going on right now, I'm able to practice for an hour or more per day. I'm keeping up with my practice journal to keep me honest and motivated. And that's a great point. Give yourself some way of visually representing the work you're doing, because that, I think, is the hardest thing when you're not in school actively anymore, when you don't have a teacher over your shoulder. It's going to be a little harder to prepare some of those recitals and things, because you're not going to feel the pressure necessarily you were feeling when you were in school. So make sure to give yourself ways to motivate to keep practicing and keep working. Absolutely. I really love Lauren's advice. You know, we kind of talked about this in our self-advocacy episode, but, you know, a lot of people post-grad, regardless of the situation now, often spend months to like a year trying to figure out a practice routine outside of this academic setting that works for them. And this really is kind of the perfect time to really figure that out because a lot of times when we graduate in a normal setting, you know, we still have things like work, we still have to go out and do things, life is very busy, so it takes us longer to kind of form that really solid practice routine. But now that a lot of that is stripped away and we do have time to really kind of choose what we want to focus on, now's a great time to really figure out, you know, starting a practice journal, like Lauren said, or, you know, just taking the time to really figure out how do I learn music best? What do I need to cut out distractions? And what do I need to do to stay motivated? Yeah, you know, that's absolutely what we have to be focusing on. And the last question we asked both of these people was, how do you think we can turn these circumstances into something positive? And what are some of the ways we can best support each other? Lauren said, I think we have to keep in contact with each other and support each other at this time. Artists are especially good at championing each other's work, but it's difficult when most of that work has been put on hold. It can be especially difficult to support other artists while your own career is in an uncertain place and no one is having any public performances. In the coming weeks, though, I think we'll see artists adapting and creating in new ways. It's important that we engage with artists in the ways that we can right now. We can share, like, and comment on what other artists post on social media. We can support artists through commissions and fundraisers like GoFundMe and Patreon. We can buy people's existing books, compositions, recordings. You can donate the money you spent on tickets to performances rather than ask for a refund. I love that last line. I really like that everybody's kind of coming to this point online of, you know, if you bought tickets to something rather than asking for a refund, donating the money. Obviously, everybody's in a different financial situation. With everything that's happening, a lot of people are experiencing job loss. But if that is something that you can afford to do, that's a really wonderful way to give back because so many of us are having contracts left and right being canceled and not um, being paid for. So 
That's a really, really wonderful point. Nathaniel goes on to say that we all have extra time on our hands and we can use that time to share and perfect our craft. These are the circumstances when art is needed the most, so let's keep making it. Try out new things. Just do art somehow. It's the best time for it. We chose this profession to speak with the human spirit. We chose it to celebrate life and to give hope for better things, so let's do it. I love that. And I'll say this, I have a couple friends today who were going live on Facebook um, with their music and it was piano and guitar and singing and it was so nice to just tune in and like talk to them a little bit. Um, So definitely support people who are putting up their work online and hang out and chat and encourage that because it will make you feel better and it it's it's a great way to reconnect with people and reconnect with the purpose of music which is to join together with other people absolutely i really just love the point that nathaniel made when he said kindness is infectious right now keep an eye out for it it's super super easy to only be freaking out and looking at the negative and trying to keep up with every single article that's coming out about COVID-19 and just kind of the gravity of the whole situation. But at the same time, if you look out for it, there really are so many musicians um, and wonderful organizations that are coming together to really support us during this time. And it is also a very positive time for us as a musical community. So, you know, I think shifting your perspective to really look out for the good and make the most of the situation is kind of that mindset that we need to be in right now. Absolutely. Great. So we also had the opportunity to um, interview a faculty member. So we decided to interview Patty Tom. She is the chair of voice and opera studies at the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. And honestly, she's just a complete badass. She's just an amazing faculty member. We really can't uh, explain enough just how much the students at the Boston Conservatory just adore her. So she definitely seemed like the right faculty member to uh, to interview. And we had a couple questions for her, starting with, can you briefly explain how COVID-19 has affected your department and your students? Patty Tom said, anytime a musician is separated from their community, in this case, their learning, living, and friend community, pretty much everything about their life and their learning is disrupted. Our students had have had to move abruptly out of the dorms and in some cases out of their apartments and in with their parents. So that will be a huge transition. Additionally, as we move to remote learning, that will be another adjustment, both for faculty and for students. And simply not seeing one another to say hi in the hallways or checking in on one another while passing in the library has been a huge loss for everyone. Yeah, I think this basically just affirms what we um, already heard from the students, which is just everyone recognizes how difficult this time is um, and considering how many transitions are happening at once for students and teachers. Absolutely. I think, you know, at least at BOCO, being in the library and just spending time at school is such a huge, like, part of feeling like a family and feeling like you're part of an institution. So, you know, that is not exclusive to BOCO. I think music communities everywhere are feeling that kind of loss of location and that stress of, of moving. So yeah, we can definitely sympathize with this. Of course. And then this one, I was actually really excited to hear back from her about only because she's the only person we know who's involved at all on the planning side of this, which is, are you planning on doing any of the canceled shows and recitals in the future or are they completely canceled? She responded this way by saying, We are really working on this. We know that under hardship conditions, art will grow like that beautiful flower you see coming up in the cracks of old concrete. Music making as we know it involves a personal collaboration, and that isn't something that we as an institution can require right now. There are some pop-up concerts happening. A group of students supported by faculty have initiated the BOCO online concert series, a YouTube to share home performances with one another. There is also a move from the AV department to post live streams of concerts that took place this year so that we can enjoy them and promote them again. We make music, it's what we do, and we all have a longing to make music right now. The leadership of the music division wants to support that in our student and faculty populations. I think that really is along the lines of what everyone was expecting, but, you know, it still sucks. (laughs) Honestly, I really like the fact that their AV department is going to post live streams of past concerts. I think that's actually really cool. I haven't heard of other places doing that yet, so I actually really, really love that, that idea. Yeah, and it's a good way to remind ourselves of all the fun things that we did do. Our next question for her was, there is a lot of focus on the hardships of current music students, but what are the hardships that faculty are currently experiencing? 
She responded, in many cases, the faculty are dealing with the anxiety of being separated from their colleagues, as well as the unknown of transitioning to teaching to a teaching platform that is, for some, entirely foreign and new. Beyond that, we have faculty whose spouses are also home and working online. Some of them are dual BOCO faculty families who will both be teaching voice lessons or coaching online at the same time. We have faculty with small children and no child care assistance, or faculty with older children who are also schooling online and need help with that. I think for all of us, our isolation from that group of people who inspire and stimulate us is the hardest thing. Yeah, absolutely. I guess I really didn't consider, you know, we're all thinking about the things we want, but teachers especially lean on each other for help. So when they can't be present with their other teachers. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, if you teach at an institution, you know, you have your office or your your studio that you're used to conducting work in. So I can imagine, you know, I hadn't even really necessarily thought of this, but that is such an important point that so many teachers are married to other teachers, and often they do work at the same institutions or, you know, even at two different institutions. But you know, I hadn't even considered the hardship of trying to both teach music online in the same space. That is very interesting. You know, every music teacher I've ever met has an entire library in their office. Yeah. Not the easiest thing to move. But yeah, it was a good look into some things we haven't really been considering because very much we've been talking about the student side of things so far. And then I think this next question is also very enlightening. Uh, What are some ways that non-musicians can help encourage and support musicians right now? Patty Tom responded by saying, there are some fundamental ways in which people can support musicians right now. There are a range of fundraising structures and crowdfunding sites in place to help those musicians who usually live a successful gig life and now have no income. For students, non-musicians can be an online audience who can give support and feedback. I think if you know a musician, just asking them how they are doing, whether they are able to make music, whether there is something, anything they need that you can assist them with, Simply acknowledging that musicians may be facing existential issues that other of us might not is helpful. Yeah, I I definitely agree with this. Um, You know, there are so many ways that our non-music friends and family can really help support us. Um, I think she included a lot of really great answers. Um, Lauren kind of had something to, to say about this as well. But we're in a time right now where we really just need to support one another regardless of what our profession is. Yeah, I think the most immediate thing is if your friends who are musicians are putting music online right now because our performances are canceled, our schooling is canceled, uh, support them. Like it, comment on it, share it. Like, make sure that they feel like they still have an audience because that's a weird thing to lose (laughs) in school. So support your friends who are putting their online because that's also a very vulnerable position. And our last question for her was specifically about how she's adapting. What is your approach to adapting curriculum for remote teaching? And how do you feel about teaching performance-based courses online? I love Patty Tom. She said, haha, I'm not 100% sure how I feel yet about teaching these classes and lessons remotely because I will start on Monday. Ask me in a week. However, I am so inspired by the many creative and innovative ideas my colleagues are throwing around with each other. Their spirit and their good minds are clearly activated by this challenge, and so that gives me confidence as I begin to revise my syllabi and my expectations and start to explore those ideas and concepts that I have always wanted to teach but have not previously had time or space in the school year to explore with my students. I love that. Ask me next week. (laughs) Well, I think... I think that brings up, uh, I think the biggest takeaway from this last paragraph is to have a little bit of grace for your teachers because they are also figuring this out on the fly and they are doing their best and will just take a little bit of time for everyone to figure out how to make this best work for everybody. But these are your teachers. These are the people who really do have your best interest at heart and are trying their hardest at this moment to make your education the best it can. Absolutely. And, you know, I really like what Patty Tom had to say about the hardships of what the faculty are currently experiencing. I mean, you know, think back about how much support you've received from your faculty members. I think now is a really, really wonderful time to think about paying that back. You know, check in on them, um, see how they're doing, you know, send them a nice email every once in a while because they have lost their community, they have lost their sense of normal, and they're also kind of in this position where they need to kind of pick up the pieces faster than anybody else in order to continue teaching us online. So 
now is an incredibly important time to be there for your faculty members and really show them support. Awesome. So we'd just like to say a quick thank you to Nathaniel and Lauren and Patty Tom for their contributions and for writing into our show. We really thank you for your generous and positive spirit. I think that gave us some really good things to look at and think about. So thank you again. And now we're going to kind of transition on to the tips on how to deal with all of this. A big thank you to Michelle, who spent most of the week compiling this gigantic list of resources from just about everywhere. It was a labor of love, but (laughs) in making this resource, uh, before we even jump into it, I want to say that in the episode description that you're listening to right now, there is a link to a blog post on our website. Um, So when we start referring to these different resources and lists, you don't have to worry about remembering them or looking them up. They are there for you, easily shareable, easy to find. They're on our website. And once again, they're linked in the episode description. Um, If you're just listening to this at home, I would actually suggest just pulling it up and reading along with us as we kind of go through the different things. But this is a very holistic resource. We're going to get into a little bit of everything. Our first kind of group of resources are just our general emergency funds, our different scientific information groups. So let's dive in. So our first resource um, is COVID-19 Freelance Artist Resource. This is a blog on WordPress, and this is absolutely the most holistic resource for national and local emergency funds. This is the link that's currently in our Insta bio, and we are going to keep it there because it is so fantastic. The group that put this together really just covered a lot of everything. Like I said, national emergency funds, local emergency funds, they have a lot of resources for our international listeners. They really just have a great resource. They have a lot of news resources there as well. You know, if you're going to check out anything, this first resource is just amazing. Absolutely. And because this list was compiled by another group of people, we want to take a moment to thank them. So a special thank you to Nicole Brewer, Anne-Marie Lonsdale, Quanice Floyd, Tiffany Wilhelm, Brian Herrera, Hannah Fenlin, and Clementine Bordeaux for compiling such an incredible resource. Really, trust us, you should absolutely go through there and look through because I have no doubt that you will find plenty of things that will help you during this time. Our next resource is called I Lost My Art Gig, which is an episode where you can create a profile where people can donate to you. And you can choose to list out the amount that you're actually losing in contracts from canceled shows, or you can be more vague about it if you don't really want to go into the details. But it's a place where you could not only set up a profile and be donated to, but if you happen to have some extra money, you can also go out there and support people who are struggling to support themselves. Definitely. The National Endowment for the Arts also has their own resources for both artists and art organizations. I've seen a lot of things online that are supporting artists and freelancers specifically, but there are obviously a ton of art organizations, theater, opera, companies, orchestras that are also missing out on a lot of income with all of these canceled shows. So that has a lot of resources if you're maybe in a more managerial position, but definitely check out the National Endowment for the Arts. Another just kind of thing to be thinking about is been a lot of buzz and different talk about talking to higher up powers about the displacement for entertainment workers. So we included a link from actionnetwork.org that allows you to tell Congress to include these displaced entertainment workers in a relief package. Um, And this is really something that we all kind of need to come together on. Even if you are not necessarily as financially affected, it's super important to be looking out for your fellow musicians and artists and really making it clear how much this is affecting our industry. So taking that time to just uh, write to them, we've included an easy link for you to click on, is really important because nobody's going to stand up for us unless we stand up for ourselves bringing it back to self-advocacy. So talking to your local representatives, your local congressmen is very, very important during this time. I also urge you to, like Michelle said, reach out to your local politicians. It's going to be very easy for groups to be overlooked. There's definitely going to be multiple stimulus packages released in the coming weeks to deal with the economic situation. And we absolutely want people who are doing contract work to be included in those. And like I said, it's very easy to overlook if you're not making yourself apparent to your politicians and their job is to advocate on your behalf. Absolutely, absolutely go sign the petition, send notes to your congresspeople and be involved in that because even if it's not affecting you now, we don't know how long it'll take for everything to come back and 
for us to reach a semblance of normal again. So we really want to have that support. Another thing that we're putting up there is links to the World Health Organization and the CDC's pages on coronavirus. We are not doctors. We will not give any health advice or speak about the different effects. We will leave it to professional organizations to cover that. But we did want to include links there for people who want to check in on it. We've also included links to the Washington Post and the New York Times to articles about social distancing and the importance of actually practicing social distancing. I know some of you are currently in states that are on order to shelter at home, but if you are in a state that is not, it is still incredibly, incredibly important for you to practice this as much as you are capable of. It will make a difference. Absolutely. And I think really one of the most important pieces of advice that I can give in regards to all of these resources is there is a lot of news going around about COVID-19, about its origins and how to prevent it and how to deal with it. All of these numbers coming out that are a lot of the times not fact-checked. So you really have a responsibility as, you know, a person in this society to be actively fact-checking anything you share on social media. I've seen way too many people claiming to suddenly have all of this medical and world health knowledge when they're just an average person. Not to say that they're uneducated, but we are not health professionals. We need to leave that up to the people who have been doing this their whole life. So when you're reading articles, please only read them from credible sources. Don't just read it because somebody randomly shared it on Facebook. And if you're going to reshare anything, you really do have a responsibility during this time to actively fact check it yourself. People are reporting about it before statements are officially being released by these huge organizations. So please, please, please don't share anything if you don't know for sure it is true because there is just too much panic going on that doesn't need to be happening because people are blowing things out of proportion. Absolutely. And I shouldn't have to say it, but I will. Do not hoard. Do not hoard things. And especially do not hoard medical supplies that actual doctors and nurses who are fighting this every day need. And if you did hoard them, donate them. All right, moving on. The other thing that we have on here are some really great Facebook groups. We have some really great Facebook groups because Michelle is a Facebook mom and is in just about every singing group on Mm -hmm. Facebook you can find. A lot of these people are offering up really great resources and offering up partnerships to like listen in on lessons with each other and to share tips on how to make Zoom work the best. So these are great groups to be a part of. But since this is Michelle's specialty, I will let her... Facebook mom expert over here. Get me a badge. Um, Yeah, we have a list. You can feel free to review them in the blog post, both for local and general groups. But the two that I definitely suggest you join is NFCS, the new, new forum for classical singers group. They're wonderful. There are so many wonderful people in this group that are sharing all of their expertise, free masterclasses, all that. Also would highly recommend the Empowered Singers group. They're very much doing the same thing. It's a great place that you can go and ask personal questions about literally anything. And the community there is really wonderful. So definitely join some Facebook groups to take advantage, like Nathaniel said, of all the help that people are offering right now. So next section we want to get into is some job tips for right now. And some of these are for jobs and some are for studies. Uh, But number one is transitioning to online lessons. Whether you are a teacher or a student, this is really tricky, especially if you've never done it before. So we have a couple options here to help improve that experience for you. First being um, Nate Plummer has been so generous in posting a guide that's like his 25 tips on online lessons. You can also check out, he just was interviewed on the Full Voice podcast, so we have a link to that as well. But he just goes through a bunch of different tips about switching to online lessons. He's somebody in the community that has been doing this for a long time, way before we're in the situation that we're in now. So he, I think he said he's done over 6,000 and online lessons. So we can definitely count on him for kind of smoothing out all the bumps that we're maybe now going through ourselves. Just a couple of the points that he makes. I think there's kind of this stigma and has always been the stigma that online lessons are just not the same as in person. And while that there might be some truth to that, I think that we just kind of have to 
bury that assumption because we're in the situation that we are in now. And he makes a really wonderful point of saying, if casting directors can accept self-tapes from singers and using online devices, then we can do the same. And it's really true because it's really good practice to know what your students look like when they're sending out these college audition videos, right? Or if you're taking voice lessons from your teacher online, then knowing what you look like on video before you're having to send it out for auditions and competitions and stuff. So you don't always look how you think you look on camera. So it's really, really good practice. And another point that he makes that I really love is never implying that the online session experience is less than or limiting or frustrating. Uh, he makes a point to charge the same amount for online lessons and in-person lessons because then if you're charging less, you're promoting that stigma that they're not getting as much as they would be if they were taking it in person. And he has a lot of great points to just kind of shift your perspective and say, you know, it might not be the same experience, but there are strengths to online online teaching and there's ways to make it just as engaging and just as um, resourceful. So um, definitely go and check out his, his guide and his interview. Absolutely. And you make a great point on the fact that we do interact with quite a few of our colleagues with tapes. I mean, when you, you're going to school, you send off tapes. When you're going to grad school, you send off tapes. When you're starting to audition, you send off tapes. And it's really an overlooked portion of our education, which is how to make good recordings that look right uh, and sound right, and how to do the settings on your camera correctly. Do I need a separate microphone? You know, all of this other stuff. And now is the time to experiment and play with that kind of thing, now that you actually have the time and you're not worried about rushing to send something off. So absolutely take this time to, to optimize that as much as you can. And speaking of adjusting those settings, like I said, a lot of schools are now using Zoom to do their lessons. And so we've included a link um, on how to optimize Zoom for music mode, which is done by the Royal Academy of Music in Denmark. So it just improves the sound quality for listening and playing music. It's great. I'm glad that somebody's actually taken the time to figure out how to make it as effective as possible. So definitely check out that if you are using Zoom for your online lessons. Definitely. And now another kind of position that we're in as as teachers, if you teach, is how do I assign my students things? How do I give them the resources, the worksheets, the kind of extra practice when I'm not with them or don't have physical things to send them home with? Um, well, we put together a really great um, resource list for keeping your students up on their oral skills, on their theory practice. Check out all of the apps and websites that we put up. Most of them are free to use. A couple of them require some payment, but for the most part, they're cheap. A lot of them are offering sales. And I personally went through this list, so I can assure you that they're all really wonderful and legit. So check it out. And there's also ones for older students and for young professionals as well. Yes. For example, on our list for older musicians, there's Teoria, which I used all the time to train my ear and to do theory work. So we've got a long list of really helpful stuff for ear training and diction uh, and theory for older students as well. So definitely go and look at those because they're very, very helpful. And this is a great time to work on some of those skills that you may have brushed off while focusing on performance. Um, another really great app that we've included on here is the plugin accompanist, which is called App Companist. This app is a revelation if you are in the position that a lot of us are, which is I have a lot of music that I'm trying to learn, but also I cannot play and sing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, the thing I love about this app is they have a, a bunch of different libraries. So they have a lot for opera and opera arias. They have a lot of different art song and they have a lot of great stuff for musical theater. So if you're within those categories, this is a great resource for you. They allow you to freely switch keys. You can observe held notes by simply clicking on some buttons, you can change the tempo, you have the option to either just play your accompaniment or also your vocal line, especially if you're learning pieces. So overall, wonderful. They also have a feature where you can write in your suggestions and requests for songs. So they're constantly working on building their library. They require a small fee, but if you're not going to be meeting with your accompanist for at least another month or who knows how long, this is a wonderful, wonderful app. And you can also send this to your students when they're practicing by themselves. Along these lines, we've also included a link to a pre-recorded vocal warm-up for women. 
by Crystal Barron, which is great. And there are also warm-ups for pretty much any voice type or any voice style. If you can't do the warm-ups yourself or you're looking for new warm-ups, you can find them everywhere. So we've linked to one really good one, but there are plenty out there for any voice type. Absolutely. And I would just like to make the point that this blog post, this resource list that we have made, it will be a work in progress. So you can write in to us, DM us on Facebook, on Instagram. We have a section on our website that you can write into your different suggestions and requests. So definitely take advantage of that, especially for this pre-recorded vocal warm-ups. I'm particularly interested in creating a little database of those. So if you personally make those or use one online already or have any resources you feel like we should be sharing, please DM us use our website. We want to continue to expand this list to have as many resources to help as many people as possible. Yeah, please tell us not only what you're using, but also what you're looking for. And we'll see if we can find it because this list will expand and continue to grow as we find more things. Another thing that we've added to this list are side gigs that you can do remotely. Obviously, a lot of us are out of work. And so this is just a couple options of ways to make money from home. The first thing on here is a list of 1,575 remote jobs. You're not going to be qualified for all of the jobs on this list, but it is extensive. Yeah, the nice thing about this um, compilation, and um, I'm sorry, I found this online, but I could not find a source to thank. So if you made this, you're wonderful. This is wonderful because you can check out the tags. So there's an entire tag section for every single job they've listed. You'll see it when you click on the link, but you can type in things like if you're interested in marketing or you have some experience in data or social media management or literally anything, you can search for that and it'll kind of narrow down the field within what you're trying to look for. So, you know, if you're looking for remote work, as many of us are, definitely check that out. You don't know what might be a perfect job for you. Some other options. There's teaching English online with VipKid. That's really big right now, especially since there are a lot of students around the world who are trying to learn English and are also not in school currently. So that can be a really great option if you're into tutoring. You can sell your clothes online. A couple websites to do that are ThreadUp, Poshmark, Depop. This is the time to go ahead and just clean out your closet and clean out the things you don't need anymore. Make some money off of them if you can. Then there's more tutoring options through Chegg and Study Pool. Once again, really great, really flexible. And there are going to be plenty of students who, once we've moved to online classes, who will need a little extra help. And then if you have a car and you feel okay about it, you can obviously deliver for DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, Uber Eats, stuff like that. That's obviously very necessary at this moment since most people are doing food delivery out of necessity. Yeah, and a lot of those different delivery services currently have a lot of bonuses or incentives that they have going on right now because there is such a high demand. So, you know, especially for us, like living out in LA, or if you live in a major city and have a car, this is really great because it doesn't require you to interact with a lot of people. So you can still, you know, kind of have that level of staying safe, but also earning some good money and really working when you want. Yeah, so that kind of gives you an idea of some side gigs that you can look into now that we're all kind of looking for remote work. But your girl always has something to say about side gigs. And there is immense value in having various streams of income. One of the biggest ways that we can do this and keep up with this is by monetizing our other talents besides music. We are all very three-dimensional, okay? We all have many talents. Music is not your only talent, and if you think music is your only talent, I can assure you, you are wrong. We all have a bunch of different skills that we are talented in, and you really should think about trying to create different streams of income based off of these different talents. For example, you guys know that I do social media marketing. I do a lot of different stuff besides music. And that's really the only way that I'm able to somewhat kind of survive this whole COVID-19 business that's going on. There are so many ways to do this, but now's the time to really think, hey, I'm good at uh, stuff with computers. I'm really, really crafty with this kind of thing. I know how to sell this. I know how to make websites. Whatever it is that you're good at, now's the time to really start kind of creating your mini company plan because the truth is we don't know when things are going to be normal. We don't know when seasons and all of these contracts and all of these summer programs are going to bounce back. So right now we're kind of having to switch gears, but that's that's a good thing because in the future, if anything, 
were to happen, you get sick, something else, there's another outbreak, who knows, whatever. Um, you really do need to kind of have this mindset of having different streams of income because it's really hard right now to just rely on one thing. Absolutely. And our last little tip for this section is if you are one of those people who was preparing a role and the show is now canceled, I think we can all universally agree that you keep that role that you prepared on your resume and you simply put a star or an an asterisk beside it and you just mentioned that it was canceled due to coronavirus because the reality is there are thousands of shows this year that are canceled. And if you've done the work to prepare that role and you earned that role, you competed with a bunch of other people to get it, then you should absolutely keep that on your resume. No one is not going to understand because we are all going through it right now. Make sure when you update your resume that you do keep those roles on there. Those of you who were in tech week and you were heading straight into these shows, you know, I know it's going to be awkward because there's just going to be kind of a weird gap on everyone's year. So keep celebrating that you earned that role, even if you don't get to do it. Yeah, do now is not the time to sell yourself short. A lot of us are in this position, especially if you're in tech week. Man, you were just like a week away from doing the thing. So definitely include it. And for those of you who are maybe pre-tech week in your rehearsal period when this was all shut down, you know, you've still done a ton of role study. Don't just give up on the role. Continue to fully learn it and then put it as a role covered and put that asterisk. There's no need to you know, take that work and that role and that accomplishment away from yourself just because of what's happening. Celebrate that little victory. We're going to get into a list of how to be productive during quarantine. Uh, But before we get into that, I just want to take a second to acknowledge that it is okay if you are not in a mental place right now to be the best you you can be. It's okay if you don't have a quarantine list and you haven't cleaned your whole house or learned a whole new language. It is okay to take a moment and be sad and to mourn and to deal with the grief of this situation and to deal with the anxiety of it. You don't have to be high functioning at the second. You can have a day where you sit in bed and do nothing but eat snacks and watch movies and be sad. That is okay. I see a lot of pressure all around especially on social media, of like making the most of this time. But sometimes making the most means resting and reflecting on what it is you want in life or or just reflecting on how much the situation honestly sucks. So please, when we get into that, do not feel pressured that if you're not doing all of these things, you're falling behind. You're not. And during this time, it's really important that you take care of yourself mentally and emotionally. So Spend less time reading the news and being on social media. It'll really take you through the ringer. I know it's hard because we're home all the time, but try and, you know, read a book, get off the computer, get off your phone, take a long bath, do some face masks, meditate, talk on the phone with loved ones, pray, journal, anything to get you away from the onslaught of news because as much as it's important to stay informed, your sanity also needs to be preserved. So look at it maybe once a day and then get away from it. Absolutely. And I mean, it's very easy on social media to block or mute certain words. So if you just need to take, you know, a day to just kind of relax and try to recenter yourself, block COVID-19, block coronavirus, just take a day to be normal and okay and do the things that you love. It, you know, the news is going to be there. You're going to find out soon enough on what you missed out on, but just take a day to chill. Exactly. Um, and it's okay. Like I said, it's okay to acknowledge that, like, this isn't the happiest time of our lives. And if you're stressed out or you're sad, please reach out to people around you. You know, I know it sometimes it can feel like I don't want to make other people sad, but trust me when I say that when you talk with somebody and who understands what you're feeling you will feel better. You will not be a burden on the people around you. It is okay to reach out. And honestly, get a buddy. Get a buddy for quarantine and talk to each other every day because it will dissipate the feelings of loneliness knowing you have somebody on your side. And talk to us. We are here for you as a community. If you want to message us on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, we will do our best to respond as quickly as possible. We are around. So please, please reach out to us if you need to. On the more professional side of things, there are online therapy apps. They do cost money, so please make sure you look at the price before you sign up for any of these, but 
this is a really mentally taxing time and there's absolutely nothing wrong with needing professional help, especially during t- times as difficult as these. Definitely. Apps like Talkspace, BetterHelp, there are a lot of these. I'm sure you're already familiar with these, but yeah, definitely don't be afraid to check out one of those online therapy apps if you really do kind of want somebody objective to talk to. You. But really, like Jesse said, you can DM us on Instagram or Facebook or wherever at any time. Even to just be like, I'm bored. What are you guys up to? Completely fine. We would love to engage with you guys. We're here to serve you guys. And we really put a lot of importance on our opera offstage community. And uh, goodness, God knows I'm always on our Instagram account. So send us a DM. We want to know how you guys are doing. We want to know what you guys are um, up to, how you're doing. So please, we're here as a community. Reach out to us. Listen, I already have Animal Crossing, and Michelle is soon to get Animal Crossing. Woo-hoo. So if you're playing Animal Crossing, like, hit us up with those friend codes. Come and hang out on my tiny island. Beyond that, um, make sure to, like with Animal Crossing, lean into the positive. Do the things that you love that you might not have had time for. You know, take a moment to reflect on the good things of this year. Try to focus on, like, the places that communities are coming together to support each other, the ways we are adapting so quickly to this difficult situation. Don't spend so much time thinking about things that have not happened yet. Do not worry about things before they demand you worry about them. And I know that's easier said than done, but trust me when I say it just does you no good to put your brain so far in the future that you cannot be present. Amen. And now that we've said that and we've talked about relaxing, I will issue a second kind of little warning, which is to say, don't get into too much of a rut either. Don't do nothing every day because that actually can make, can make things harder. I'm a person who I definitely need a couple days to move through things emotionally, but if I stay in it, it only gets worse. So I do urge you that after you take some time to mourn, and to commiserate with friends about how much things suck that you do, do a little project, do something that'll make you happy, cook a new meal, make something fun, but make sure you do start to do other things because that is part of what will make it better and it will get easier the more you do things. So on that note, here are a couple productive things that you can do while you're under quarantine. You can create a watch list or a playlist of pieces or even stream some operas for free through MedHD. These are all really, really great ways to motivate yourself to practice. There's nothing better than watching professionals do an amazing job. (laughs) And I know that I'm personally really behind on having watched or listened to as much opera and classical music as I should have at this point in my life. So now is a great time to catch up. I have a very long watch list on YouTube that I kind of need to start making a dent in anyway. Yeah. Also, let's come together on this. Jesse and I are researching different ways that we might be able to put together a little opera watch party. So we'll keep you updated on that. Definitely follow us on Instagram and Facebook to kind of hear updates about that. But we want to watch things with you guys because that's fun. Uh, But also we might look into making a a playlist of pieces for you guys to to listen to. So like I said, uh, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram to keep up with that. Yeah, we're going to try and figure out a way for us to do kind of an opera movie night. So stay stay posted for that one. Other things you can do, a lot of you are preparing research papers along with your recitals. So it's a great time to go ahead and crack open that book um, or a biography of those composers and musicians. A particular resource that I've always loved is vocal coaches and pianists. Their books are really eye-opening for singers because it's just a different approach to the same music. So I urge you to go and look for some of those. But yeah, it's a great time to grow your knowledge about the composers you're singing. Definitely. Another thing that um, you can do and that I'm currently doing is you can create an Excel sheet of future rep and share it with your voice teacher. So kind of what I've been working on with my voice teacher is we made like a, a Google Excel sheet that both of us are on. And it has all of the rep that I've learned in the past, what I'm working on now, and kind of like our future arias that we're looking at, and maybe like a couple dream things that are definitely far off in the future. I have that same format for all of my art song. I have another tab that's all competitions that has information about competitions I'm interested, my competition packages, and different summer programs. So that's a really cool time to just kind of think and sit down and be like, what's some of the rep that I should be looking at? 
Is there a way that I can collaborate about it um, with my teacher and keep them in the loop? It's just been kind of a fun project for me because I think I have all of these pieces swimming around in my mind and I'm like, oh, I just really want to learn this aria. Maybe it's appropriate now or I just really want to learn this role in the future. And keeping your teacher a part of it is, is cool and can kind of continue to push you forward in your lessons. So yeah, absolutely start a project and start revamping. This is the best time possible for you to revamp your audition packages. I always put it off because I always think I've got another audition coming soon. I need to focus on what's already in there. Now is the time. We have no excuses. Another option or another really great thing to do during this time is to start a new exercise routine. I personally have had a lot of trouble sleeping recently and working out helps so much with my anxiety and my my sleeplessness. Um, and it also, you know, it's a huge rush of endorphins. You know, and there are tons and tons of body weight exercises that need no equipment. So I urge you to take some time out of your day, even if it's just like 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and we've listed a couple apps here that are super helpful for this kind of thing. One is the Sweat app and the other is 8Fit. And they've all got tons of these short workouts that you can try. Yeah, I can pretty much guarantee you that doing at least some form of exercise is going to really make you feel so much better. I think now that a lot of us are kind of just stuck in our houses and maybe, you know, being on the computer or watching a lot of movies or just kind of sitting, come bedtime, we're not tired really because we've just kind of been lounging. So getting in some exercise will help you sleep better, like Jesse said. But also if you have the chance to go outside, even if you just eat your lunch in your backyard or go on a hike and just make sure you stay far away from your fellow hikers. Getting out and really getting some sun is really important, not only for your health, but especially your mental health. Another really great option is there are tons of museums that you can visit virtually and go on virtual tours of. Yeah, I linked a really wonderful list from travelandleisure.com uh, that has links to a bunch of different museums that you can virtually tour ones in the United States and mostly ones abroad, which is just really cool. But I did not realize how many of these leading museums had all of these virtual tours. So, you know, while you're sitting on the couch eating your macaroni and cheese, go to visit some of these museums, you know? I think that that is kind of a fun way to quote unquote, get out of the house without leaving your couch. So um, that could be a lot of fun. Definitely check out that. It's a great way to learn new things um, and to see some places you've never been before, all from home. Um, it's also a great time to start uh, doing an online class or researching something you wanted to know more about. Both MIT and Harvard have online courses that are free and open to the public, so definitely go and check those out. Um, you can take the classes are on such a wide expanse. You could take music, it could be coding, it could be you'd have to go check it out. It, those lists are pretty extensive. Those are courses offered by top universities. So I would definitely go and look at them. Yeah. And a lot of those courses are free and easily accessible. Another thing that you could consider is, you know, making a Skillshare account or a masterclass uh, account and just kind of paying that with a couple of friends. Now is definitely the time to just learn something new. If you're kind of itching at home and maybe are starting to get tired of practicing or just like need some other sort of stimulation. Learning a new hobby is really wonderful, especially since we kind of were talking about having different streams of income. If there's something that you are interested in or have like a medium level of experience in, really take that time to hone your skills. Another huge thing that I think a lot of people are thinking about is taking this time to improve their language skills or start learning a new language. And I'm going to start by saying, stop neglecting your Duolingo, okay? That owl knows where you live and will show up in your house in the middle of the night. Just kidding. But um, we all know that Duolingo is literally like after us. So now's a great time to continue your practices. But something that I, that my boyfriend sh showed me that I kind of like a lot better than Duolingo. Don't tell them I said that, but Radiolingua has this series of interactive podcasts. It's called their Coffee Break series, where you can learn French, German, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Swedish, in this kind of interactive podcast setting. So what's really, really cool is the episodes are only like 20 minutes long, so super short. And you have a 
highly educated and trained speaker, you have a native speaker, and then you have a third speaker who's also learning the language and doesn't know anything, and you interact kind of with the three of them, and you get to learn alongside. They provide different cultural insights as well. So I really highly recommend this. I I started their Coffee Break Italian and I already feel like I'm learning a lot and I've only listened to like four of the, the podcast episodes. And honestly, I have such a good time with them. I am like smiling the entire time it's happening. They make me laugh. So I, if you're looking at doing and learning a new language, this is a really wonderful tool. I highly suggest you check it out. Yeah, and I think it targets really the the hardest part about learning a language, which is hearing something and getting your brain to develop a response. Exactly. On a very specific level, there is actually a really great free session uh, on Russian diction that is going to be hosted on Zoom on Saturday, March 28th. And it's going to be hosted by the Chicago Opera Theater's Lydia Yinkovska, which is great. I don't know how many of you have sung in Russian. I have sung in Russian. I really struggle with Russian. I will probably be in this session. (laughs) Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to sign up for sure. Russian diction is just one of those things that there's not usually a class for it in school. So you're kind of just expected to learn it some other way. Here is your other way to learn it. That's a really great thing. And once again, if you know of any other sessions or things like this, please send them to us and we will add them to this list. Another thing that I feel is specifically targeted at me on this list is practice your piano skills and your oral skills exercises. This is something I always have to keep working on. This is a great time to actually sit down and practice, especially since most of us obviously do not live with our accompanists. So it's a great time to learn how to simplify what you're singing. So simplify your piano pieces, uh, because that's what you're essentially going to do for students when you play for them anyway. So it's a great time to actually practice those skills and really work on them. Absolutely. Another thing that I feel very passionate about is taking this time to update your resume your various PR materials, and making a professional website. Also targeted at me. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I love you, Jesse. But I, I have just, I feel, I don't know. It's very interesting to me that I am meeting more and more young artists that don't have a professional website. And I think a lot of people think that, you know, I'm not far enough along in my career, or I just don't have the time to set aside to build this thing out, or blah, 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 blah. But professional websites are an incredible asset, especially since we're all kind of stuck at home <laughs> right now. So you have the time to start building that out. I know it's tedious work, but there are so many online courses to kind of break that down for you if you've never done it before. Once again, you can DM me. I've built websites several times, but Anna Caldwell is hosting a pay what you can class for website design that's specifically geared towards artists. So we included a link for that in our blog post. But now is a really, really good time. Websites are very important. And they are a great hub for all of your videos for all of your contact information. So they are only going to serve you. So you might as well spend the time while we're in isolation doing that. My only real suggestion on this is to definitely spend some time just going through artists you like, go to their websites, see how they design them, see how they format their resume. The best thing you can do for some of these is sometimes to steal, not literally steal, but look at other people's formatting and designs, decide what you do and don't like, uh, and that'll give you a really good idea of what you're doing. Um, with any kind of design work. Think of somebody that you know, um, who's maybe like a step or two above you, so so to speak, in their professional career, and check out their websites. Um, Because that's going to give you a good idea of where you're headed, um, and what your website could potentially be looking like. Some other things that you can do, you can definitely start listening to some new podcasts. Obviously, you're listening to a great option right now. But... (laughs) <laughs> uh, but there's also some other really great opera podcasts like Aria Code, Sex, Drugs, and Opera, and Opera After Dark. If you also need something to de-stress instead of focusing on music, I'm going to throw out there. There's like two podcasts that I'll listen to pretty frequently right now, which is My Favorite Murder. So if you like true crime and you're like me and you like to go even darker when things are dark, My Favorite Murder is great. And then there's also How Did This Get Made, which is a great podcast about bad movies. Those are both very popular, but they're definitely something to get you through the day if you need a distraction instead. 
If you're looking for something girly, like just girl chat, that's going to make you feel motivated and very positive and make you laugh, the What We Said podcast is one of my favorite. I listen to it in the car all the time and at home because it's just really wholesome and funny. Um, But there are really so many podcasts out there. And if you think that you're not a podcast person, like you just are not listening to the right podcasts. Obviously, you are a podcast person if you're listening to this right now. But there are so many good podcasts, so check them out. Another really great thing, though, to do right now is to start making a budget. Obviously, money is tight for a lot of us, and some of us are out of work. So it is a great time to really think long term about your financial situation and where you'd like to be um, and what you can do to get there. Now, you can do this on your own, but there's also two really useful sites. There's You Need a Budget and Mint. They're very, very helpful if you've never actually had to make a budget yourself, but also know that it's completely possible to make a functioning budget in Google Docs, which is what I used to do. So this is a great time to break down your financial situation, though, and really look at what you're paying for and make the most of it. Back on to, back on to some more fun things. You can also watch documentaries. Uh, we mentioned Met HD earlier. There's also Medici TV um, and also... Look into your school's databases, go onto the library for your university, even if you've already graduated, and see what resources you still have access to, because sometimes you can watch quite a bit of free opera, recital, musicals, all through your school. Absolutely. And as we all know, now's the time to start FaceTiming your friends. Cards Against Humanity and a lot of those fun card games have online versions, so definitely play some games with your friends. There's a Chrome extension called Netflix Party that allows you to watch Netflix shows together. It keeps you synced up on where you left off if somebody pauses, and there's a group chat, which is just really easy and accessible. So like we said, we're going to try and start some different watch parties, so check out our Instagram and Facebook for that. But this is a really cool way to kind of feel like you're still engaging with other people, and it's just going to help you feel better and less alone. Yeah, and you know, this is also a great time to throw on a podcast and get organized. I have ADHD, I'm horrifically unorganized, and I rarely have the time to restructure things. I actually literally moved almost a year ago, probably got the last of my stuff here about six months ago, and I still have stuff that's not unpacked. So it's a great time to just get to those projects that you've been putting off doing and to get them organized in a way that's actually functional instead of just for the purpose of not having boxes around anymore. So definitely make the most of that. Also, a lot of us have huge collections of music, so now it's time to free up those folders and reorganize them so you know where things are. Definitely. We also included a link to an article on CS Music, and it's called... Operation Secret Project. And I really love this sentiment. Ultimately, the article goes on to talk about this idea of having a secret project that is entirely your own and takes advantage of the fact that you are a multi-talented and multifaceted person. Um, So kind of tying back what we were talking about earlier, this article gives the example of Lin-Manuel Miranda creating Hamilton and how that was just kind of his secret project until it turned into this insane thing. And let me preface by saying nobody's expecting you to write the next like Grammy winning whatever or a Pulitzer Prize winning whatever. It's just a secret project. And the sentiment that I really like is that do something that maybe is not related to music or is related to a different facet of music. You know, expand your horizons. And the best thing about this is if it fails or you decide that, oh, that didn't work out, or actually, that's not my passion, or, you know, maybe this just isn't my thing. That's okay. It's a secret project. Nobody has to know about it. You just, whatever. It's a learning experience. So, you know, doing things like writing a play, starting a blog, starting a YouTube channel, literally anything could be really fun and a cool exploratory project. And if it fails, it's not a failure. It was just a different attempt at something else. Exactly. I I had a project, not this past summer, but the summer before, um, and it was this kind of intensive video project that I did. I was very excited about it, and I never ended up editing it or putting it anywhere. But it made my summer so much better because I didn't have any music propositions that summer and I was spending most of it at home and it just gave me so much to look forward to. And I think that's the really important thing about these projects is it gives you something to look forward to in this time. And that's incredibly important. And that video project actually spurred the the idea for this podcast. Now that has changed 
quite a bit since we started working on this together. You never know what those projects may eventually become. They may be something you put aside and you pick up years later. So this is, I think, one of the best ways you can deal with this time is to just give yourself things to look forward to. Absolutely. Start a secret project just for fun. I think there's also this kind of idea sometimes that, you know, I'm a music musician, music is my passion, and that's what I do. Um, but that's just not really realistic and not true. Um, so don't feel embarrassed about starting or experimenting in something that's maybe non-musical or, um, you know, really whatever. I think that sometimes we are like, Sometimes there's this sentiment that if you're not 100% focused on only your main craft, then you you know you're not as dedicated as you could be. But I just think that that's just kind of stupid. Like other experiences and other passions and other hobbies greatly inform you know what you do musically, and you know as we've kind of discussed, they can be great sources of income if there's, there's something else that you're very interested in and talented in. So. You know, I really, really like this idea of a secret project, so try something out. So that kind of concludes our productive things to do under quarantine, but we're really interested to know kind of the ideas that you guys are coming up with. Everybody is just so creative in, you know, how they can spend their time. So, you know, send us a DM. We want to know what you guys are up to. We love seeing that kind of content. And then, you know, just as a reminder, all of the resources and job tips that we put, our blog post is flexible. So if you have a resource or if you're offering something um, to the music community in this time of need, we want to know about it and we want to add it to our source because right now there's nothing more important than our music community coming together and supporting one another. And just as a reminder, everything that we've talked about in here and more is in our blog post, which we will link to in the description of the podcast. We will link to it on our Instagram, and we will link to it anywhere else that it makes sense to on any post we make about this episode. But it is on our actual website. That's kind of it for us today, but I do want to remind you that you are all incredibly important and worthwhile people. Even when we can't do the thing we feel like we came here to do, you have something to offer, and you have something that a lot of people need right now, which is hope. And music, even in its saddest forms, offers a form of hope, or at least a form of understanding. And so I urge you to keep sharing your music with the world, whether it's old recordings, or it's a self-concert, or or if it's just your favorite recording of someone else singing. Uh, keep sharing music, because in the hardest times, we want the best of things, the best of the things that we had. And I think our music is part of that. I think it brings a lot to us, so keep sharing what you have, even if it doesn't feel like you really can right now. Absolutely. I mean, our Opera Offstage community, we are here for you. For you. We're here to help you. We're here to get through this together. So, I mean, I'm telling you, when I say send me a DM anytime, I mean it. I will always respond, uh, no matter what it is you're DMing us about send us a DM on at Opera Off Stage. We want to chat. We want to be part of the conversation. We want to engage with you. We want to be there to support you. So let us know what's up. Send us a, an update on how you're doing. We really do want to know. Um, so yeah, we are here for you, fam. So this has been Opera Off Stage. Uh, you can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Opera Off Stage. Uh, and our website with the blog post is opera offstage.com. So please check out that as well. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.